In this lesson, we're going to talk about the EDGE model. Now, the EDGE model is not a specific learning goal that is in the syllabus. However, in the syllabus, it does talk extensively about the EDGE model as the model or process or framework that we are to use when we are developing assignments and projects during the course. You are to use it to explore, develop, generate, and evaluate the projects that you make. And you are to reflect this process in the assignments and the paperwork that you generate and develop. So we're going to talk through this process today. You don't need to memorize everything that I go through at the moment. It will be underpinning a lot of the work that we do and explicitly mentioned at the time. So you'll be able to file and build up ideas and understanding of how it works and the different components of the model as we work through it and learn to use it. So, so far in this course, we have defined the idea of a digital problem. We talked about the fact that they're open-ended problems, that there is no one solution to any of the problems. We also considered the different ways of thinking about problems using this idea of computational thinking. And that had four aspects. It had decomposition, where we break down a project or a problem. It had pattern recognition, where we looked for familiar things or things that have been done before or things that are repeated that we could use to simplify a problem. We looked at abstraction where we took away the detail and looked at the problem as a whole in order to understand what the key and core functionality and requirements are. We also talked about algorithms, the step-by-step -step instructions that we would implement or develop to solve a problem. So that's where we've been so far. But those ideas don't help us to conceptualize. That means to understand or think about the problem or how to solve it. They don't give them an, us an idea of how to use these things in practice. So what we really need is a, it's a problem solving process. We, we need to be able to answer questions like, uh, when, when should I use decomposition? Um, how do I define a problem? Well, in fact, what things need to be defined as part of the problem to start with? How could I abstractly think about the problem? How do I work out when I should be using abstraction and looking at the big picture as opposed to the small detail. And really importantly, how will I know that I've actually solved the problem at the end? How will I know that I've done a good job? So in digital solutions, we're going to use this method or framework called EDGE. Now EDGE is an acronym. It has four parts, one called explore, one called develop, one called generate, and one called evaluate. Now this is not a linear process. It does not move sequentially. It does not go explore, develop, generate, evaluate. That's actually wrong. It doesn't happen like that at all. It's a little bit more involved. And by a little bit more involved, I don't mean highly complicated. I just mean it's nonlinear. And we come back and repeat on some of the characteristics over time. So the way it starts is we start off by exploring. And as we complete exploring, we evaluate, we work out how, what do I need? What are my criteria? How am I gonna do this? Am I on the right track? And then after you've evaluated, you go and develop some aspects of a solution. You develop ideas of what needs to be included. And then you go back and you evaluate whether your things that you've come up with match the criteria that you worked out earlier. And then you make some refinements and changes to improve the ideas that you have. So we're back in the middle again. And then after we've developed and refined, we come back and we generate. That means we build something called make something. And once we've made it, then we go back and evaluate again. How are we going? Are we still on track? Are we still hitting the key and important parts of this solution? And then we can make refinements again to what we've made and also recommendations about what could be done in the future. So it's a cyclical process centered on this idea of evaluation and refinement. So what specifically fits under these four headings? So we're going to deal with them one at a time now. So let's think about explore. So when we explore, we're doing an investigation. We are looking at the human need, want, or opportunity that exists, and we want to analyze it and understand the digital problem. So at the very beginning, we explore, and we want to know what the problem is. 
And then we want to go and see, are there any other solutions out there that have solved or attempted to solve this problem before? So we look at those existing solutions and work out what works and what doesn't work and how can we do something better or different? So when we explore, we describe the problem from a user perspective. So it's okay if you don't fully understand the terms that I'm using. That's why we are actually going to use them and develop ideas and understand how to do these over the coming weeks. Then we're going to decompose the problem and the existing solution. So we're using decomposition twice. We're going to break down the problem, work out what needs to be in it, and then we're going to look at existing solutions and we're going to break them down also and see what they do. We're going to use abstraction and pattern recognition to identify different parts of a problem. We're going to say, well, this looks like a manageable aspect of the problem. This is what we're going to do. These are the big things and these things are not relevant or these things are repeated. Let's keep doing those. We're going to identify and understand the possible solution requirements. Now, there's a key word possible there, because at this point in time, there might not be a correct answer, or we might not know exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to come with everything, and then we're going to refine that later. And also, we're going to work out some criteria that we can be used to evaluate a solution. We're going to work out, how will I know I have solved this problem successfully? And those criteria are going to be really important. So we really want to do a good job of developing them when we explore the problem. And then we want to evaluate some of the ideas that we have and determine which ones are the most positive or beneficial that seem to be hitting our criteria. So we explore, we ideate, we come with ideas, we break apart problems and existing solutions, and we choose the stuff that is best fitting to our mind to solve the problem at that point in time. And then we move on from explore and we start developing. So notice during that exploration phase, we did do evaluation during it at the end. So in develop, we are creating new understanding. Okay, We're actually starting to come up with ideas and put the pieces together of our knowledge because we really did a lot of decomposition and explore. And when we create new understanding, we take those different pieces and we put them together to see what they come up with. And we start doing that to identify possible solutions. Note the word solutions, it's plural. We haven't actually chosen or decided what we're going to do at this point in time. We're just coming up with ideas. During the develop phase, we're also going to evaluate our progress using those criteria from the explore phase. And we're going to do that to help us make decisions about what to do next. So we're going to come with ideas and then we're going to say, well, does this match my criteria? And if it does, great, we'll keep using them. But we might have come with idea and then we look at the criteria and say, well, actually, this doesn't satisfy our criteria. What well, sort of does, but sort of doesn't. So we're going to have to make changes because that criteria that satisfies our users' needs and requirements is going to be really crucial and make those refinements or changes to what we're currently doing to hit those criteria. So to develop our ideas, these are the actual physical skills we're going to do. We're going to visualize ideas. We're going to draw pictures. And we're going to synthesize information and ideas. So that means we're going to take different things and we're going to put them together in new and different ways. And we're going to just use drawing and creative skills to represent and communicate ideas. We're going to draw pictures create models, do sketches, create diagrams. Those are the, all the types of things we're going to do during develop. We're going to go and acquire required information, tools, or skills to implement a solution plan. So we're going to work out, now that we've got some ideas, what things do we need to be able to do in turn, to turn these ideas into a reality? And we're going to go and acquire those things. We're going to start creating some algorithms. And we're going to develop ideas for different parts of the solution. So initially, our solutions are going to be basically just user interface and programming. But later on, there's going to be data as well. So we have these different moving parts. I'm going to have to tackle each component or each part of the solution independently and then put them together. 
And we're also going to generate creative ideas to identify a solution. And we're going to evaluate those ideas to find the ones that best meet our criteria for success. So coming out of develop, we're going to come up with this preferred solution. We're going to come with lots of ideas, do a bit of thinking, and then crystallize or settle on one idea that we are actually going to go on and generate. Now generate's where we actually make stuff. And this is where we create those components of an identified digital solution. So we make things. We write the code, we build the user interface, and we get people to play with it. And this is the fun stuff. But while we're doing this, we're just going to keep evaluating our progress using those criteria from that explore phase. We're going to keep coming back to those criteria. Are we still making something that satisfies what our needs are due? And we're going to do that to make decisions about what to do next. And we're going to do that to make refinements or changes to what we're currently doing. So we're pretty much repeating that idea from develop. As we do stuff, we're going to look at the criteria and say, are we doing the right thing? And if we're not, we're going to twist or change our track until we are matching what we need to do. And when we generate solutions, that's where we make the individual parts of the preferred solution and evaluate and respond to the results of alpha testing. That means we're going to make stuff, but we're not just going to make it. We're going to give it to people in the class and our friends and family. We're going to get them to try stuff and they're going to give us feedback and tell us how we're going. And we're going to construct the solution and communicate knowledge and understanding of the solution. We're going to tell other people how it works and why we did things. And then finally, we get to the point where we evaluate. Now, it involves the appraisal. Now, appraisal means to judge the merit or worth of something. So we're going to appraise it against personal, social, and economic impacts. Are we having a solution that changes people's lives? And we're going to appraise the components and the entire digital solution. The way we're going to do this, we're going to assess the strengths, implications, and limitations against criteria. So that same criteria. So evaluation occurs through each phase of the digital solutions problem solving process. And we do it to refine the components of the solution in response to those prescribed and self-determined criteria that exist. So Edge is really useful, and, and you shouldn't be scared by anything that I said in this little talk. Because really, in reality, it's just a framework that helps us to know how to work through a solution. It, it, it's a roadmap, roadmap to saying, this is what you need to do, do that next, do that next, do that next. And we'll follow that process, and that will help us to know exactly where we are, how we are progressing and are we on schedule to finish the solution on time.